Growing up on a farm, I was always mechanically inclined. I was the kid that was tearing things apart, working on them. I've been turning wrenches since I was a little kid. Being mechanically inclined, then I went to Purdue, which is very close, and chose mechanical engineering as a major. As I was raised up attending the antique shows, I was quite familiar with steam engines and tractors. So we went to this uh, farmer's estate auction sale, had this one steam engine. It was on a trailer. They yanked it, pulled it out of the barn, hadn't been touched for 30 or 40 years. He mentioned to me that he thought it came from Purdue. And I said, well, I got to own that for sure. <laughs> so I took a chance on it and brought it back home. We parked it in Dad's barn and I took it outside. It was all rusted solid, nothing moved. So I oiled it up and loosened everything up and got it rolling around at least. As I was looking it over, I found a stamped serial number on the flywheel. Serial number PU21970. And I thought, bingo, that's it. There's my Purdue um, documentation. Before the internal combustion engines came around, steam was very popular. Late 1800s, early 1900s, Purdue was the top steam engineering school in the United States. That building was loaded with steam engines just like this. Purdue was the first engineering school that had a locomotive mounted on a dynamometer inside of a building. Everybody was studying steam so they could use steam for power in factories. A lot of the steam engines were belted up to line shafts to run factory equipment. They were belted up to generators to generate electricity. And this particular steam engine would have been maybe 20 horsepower. And it weighs a ton and a half to generate 20 horsepower, but it only has one piston um, running at about 200 RPMs. They started measuring the horsepower and efficiency outputs. I have a little instrument called the steam engine indicator. A drum here with a piece of paper. This one even actually has an old paper diagram on this. The steam pressure inside your cylinder as it's running moves this little arm up and down. There would be a pencil lead here that moves up and down on the paper. This string would be tied to this triangle block. So as the engine is running, this triangle block is moving back and forth. It is pulling this string back and forth. The string pulling rotates the strum back and forth. So you can see this graph right here. That's a graph of the position of the piston and the pressure inside the cylinder. Nowadays, we have lots of electronic equipment to, for data acquisition, but this was data acquisition 120 years ago. Paper, rotating drum, and pencil. Internal combustion engines increased, steam engines started to fade away, and by 1930s, probably, the steam engineering major um, decreased. As far as I know, there's only a couple of steam engines that were ever used from Purdue that are still in existence. Over the past 20 or 30 years, I've been collecting instruments and little small things with the intentions of one day finally restoring it, mounting it on a trailer, get it operating and demonstrating it exactly the way students did in class. 100, over 100 years ago. It's the history. Purdue researches new technology all the time, but we can't let the old technology, things that was our history, what got us to this point, we can't let all that disappear. 